been a long time coming, but I think I finally found my perfect vlogging setup. What's up everybody, James Jackson here. I'm back with another video. If you don't know about my channel, I basically do gear reviews. I also do tutorials on video productions and how to set up different things as well as give tips and tricks about the video industry as well. So if you like the content of my channel, please make sure to hit that subscribe button and hit the bell so you can be updated on all content going forward. Today I'm talking about uh, what I think is the perfect vlogging setup or the most minimalistic vlogging setup to get the most out of your video shooting in terms of vlogs. And this is also a review of my newest camera that I've had to the market, which is this guy right here, the Sony A6400. I was going to go and do two different videos, a review of the A6400, didn't talk about vlogging, but I was going to say pretty much the same things in both videos, so I just figured why not just combine them all into the same video so we can just go ahead and do it. By the way, everything that I will be talking about today, I will be leaving links in the description below. All I ask for is that you use the affiliate links if you end up thinking about purchasing these guys so the some little commission, a little bit of change can come my way so I can support this channel and continue to grow this channel and make more content for you guys. Let's start off with the A6400 and why I think this is probably uh, what I think is the best vlogging camera setup. First off, let me just say, this is not really necessarily a technical spec review of this camera. There's been tons of reviews like that over the years. And also, pretty much a lot of the specs, the main key light specs are pretty much the same as the previous models, the A6500 and the A6400. The big thing that's least different between this model and the A6500 is that there's no in-body image stabilization. I don't care. I personally think IBIS is probably the most overrated feature of the past 10 years, for video at least. That's my opinion. Um, so that, I having no IBIS really doesn't, you know, affect my decision of this camera. For those of you that know me for quite a while, you know I am not actually the biggest Sony fan. Um, I have been... Well, I should say it's. I've been critical on a lot of things that I have. I still am critical on a lot of things. Um, I'm not really a big fan of their color science. Their menu structure is to me is like one of the worst, and that is a big thing to me. It may not seem like a big deal, but when I'm just trying to get something really quickly to then scroll through the menus, um, it's it's cumbersome. Yeah, I know they have a my menu system, but you still have to set that up, and that's some things that I just want to be able to have a camera that I can just go into the menus, get what I need, and go. Not have to just create some sort of custom menu to make this work. Um, this, But this camera does a lot of things right that I can overlook that. The, the menu is, structure is still garbage in my opinion, but the My Menu system definitely does help alleviate it. It's still not my favorite, but I could live with the things that make this camera and why I love this camera so much. What does affect my decision of camera and why I say I think this is like one of the best vlogging cameras is this right here, the flip up screen. And it's amazing that I can now flip up and look up this way. I know a lot of people, you know, poo pooed about the flip up part over going to flip into the side. I personally like the flip up more simply because I am somebody, personally, that looks to more into the monitor itself, more so than looking at the lens of the camera. So seeing the monitor and looking at it directly up so it keeps the eye line. So let me, if I could show you real quick. So flipping this up and being able to have my eye line similar to the camera is much more helpful than it being off to say to the side and then I'm check and you'll see me f sort of looking to the side to check my to check my to check my framing and everything. So 
the flip up screen, I personally prefer a flip up screen more so than a flip to the side. So if Sony goes with more more of their models with the flip up screen, I think that's a much more bonus than a negative in my part. I know a lot of people are gonna talk about um, putting on a microphone. We'll get to audio in a second because because that goes into the vlogging part. The other thing that I love about this, and this is the key thing, is the autofocus. The autofocus on this thing is amazing. It's great. I love the fact that I could just set up, it, fa it face tracks me, and it is running good. It's not as good as Canon's dual pixel autofocus in video mode. Um, the eye autofocus for photos is great, and I do love that. So when I'm out just with the family, taking photos, um, I can just go ahead and it's almost getting perfect images every single time. Um, but in terms of video, the face tracking is really, it's really, really good. Not as good as Canon's, but damn near close. So those couple features, the flip up screen, the uh, autofocusing is really what makes me consider this camera. And also the other thing is that, look, something that I've been very, very critical about Sony and I just mentioned it before, um, the color science. The color science on this is vastly improved compared to its previous uh, predecessors. This one has the new color science that has been in the A7 III, which is also the color science that's coming from the Venice. So I'm so glad they're using this new color science. It's basically, um, so far it's a great color science. And the no, at least in terms of without picture profile, especially if it's in a controlled environment, like how I typically do vlogs um, inside my house, the color science is almost perfect. I don't have to really tweak it that much. Maybe a little bit here and there, depending on a few things, but you really have to do very little tweaking when you're not using any picture profiles. When you're using HLG and S-Log, especially S-Log, it's a little, it's still a bit more cumbersome, but it's a lot better than it was before. So, and then it's still got all the other features you know in Sony, uh, 120 frames per second in 1080, it's really great. So, the why did I basically, I sold my Canon M50 for this camera. And why did I do that? Um, it's not my main camera, it's not my A camera, it's not even my B camera, those are my Blackmagic Pocket Cinema camera and my Canon C200. I got this camera mainly to do my vlogs or if I just need to go out and I just need to be traveling as light as possible. And that's where it's going to be leading up to here, is that this camera, along with this lens, I think this is the best lens for this type of camera, which is Sigma 16 millimeter. Uh, it pretty much sets it to a 24 millimeter, so it's got a nice wide focal range. It's still light, it's still pretty compact, and it just, whenever I just need to grow out, uh, get out and grab footage, this is so easy to do. So, I really, really love this camera. I love the fact, by the way, two more things that I do love that I didn't mention before, sorry. Other features that I do like about this is the fact that A, there is no longer a 30 minute record limit. You can record as long as the battery runs and as long as you have media. So as long as you have both of those, you can record till your hearts can buy. So I love that about this. And the fact that I love the fact that you can now assign the, um, the photo button as your video record button. So I no longer have to hit this stupid little any conspicuous record button off to the side. I always hated that about Sony's cameras. So Sony has definitely stepped up to the point where I actually consider purchasing this camera and I love this camera. I think this is a great camera and as you will see going into the next portion of the video, why I think this is the perfect vlogging camera. What's great about this is this is pretty much all I basically need to go out and just capture something really quickly, especially if you're trying to be minimalistic and on a uh, light and just basically putting something as small as maybe like a pouch or a car little carry-on bag that you can throw on, especially if you're like going through airports so you don't have to deal with much security. So what I love about this is we got the cage from Small Rig. I love this cage. Uh, this is a really nice, simple cage. It's very inexpensive. It's about $45. And this is probably the key portion because one of the things I mentioned before is the flip-up screen. This blocks that shoehorn 
What's great is that we're going to audio right now. These guys, this is the Rode Wireless Go system. I love this audio system. I think it's one of the best audio use systems for its price point. It's really simple, compact. I've done my review about this already. If you haven't checked out my review, I'll make sure to leave a link in the description below as well as like an information card bar up as well. But what I love about this is the fact that with the transmitter and the receiver, you can easily put the receiver right here on the side right here, run into the 3.5 millimeter jack, plug that in, and bam, clip this on to your talent or your subject, and you're pretty much got really great audio. And by the way, the preamps in the A6400 is great. I love the fact that you can bring the internal gain all the way down to as little as possible and still get the full effect of the microphone. So these two are a great combo system right here. And even if you didn't have the cage and you wanted to sort of, you all you had is the cold shoe mount, now, you would have to take the eyepiece off, but you could take the eyepiece off, flip this up, and it's still a little bit, but you can still see yourself. You can still see the top portion just to make sure you're still in frame. But I think the cage is a nice little added bonus because it just gives you a little bit of extra space, and you can put your microphone right there, and you keep your eyepiece. So I think it's a win-win overall in terms of audio. This is definitely the best way to go, Rode Wireless Go with the A6400. Let's talk about this lens right here. This is a 16 millimeter F4 Sigma lens. It's not one of their art lenses. This is part for their APS-C's. It's designed specifically for APS-C lenses like this uh, A6400. And I think this is a great, great first pickup. This is the lens I think you should pick up um, as soon as you can afford to get a secondary lens after getting your kit lens. The kit lens is okay, but honestly, I didn't zoom in a lot because it, you lose um, you lose your aperture whenever you zoom in. You it gets it gets darker. It stops down. With this, it with this, it's a prime lens, so you got this focal length. So you may lose your zoom, but you get the added bonus of a very very fast aperture lens. This goes all the way down to f 1.4, and with the autofocus of this camera right here this is a low light beast to run with i think the combination of a, a fast aperture like that with the low light capabilities of this camera it's pretty decent in low light as is it gets even better with a fast glass and the autofocus works really really well as well next thing i'm going to talk about right here is this little tabletop stand tripod this is probably of the sort of style of tripods, the gorilla pods, and all those others. This is probably my favorite one. This is the Surui uh, tabletop tripod. I love it because you can hold the legs down like this and extend so you can get a little bit more reach with your lens so you can see a little bit more. And then also, you can fold this up whenever you're done. You can fold this up and tie it up, and it's small enough to go easily go in the bag. And I love about the grips is when even when it's held up like this, you can actually hold. It's got a nice little grip here, so it's easy to just travel and carry along with. Filming outside, you gotta look at ND filters. So obviously having variable ones, this is probably um, so far my favorite one. This is the Simon. Um, this is the 70. I think this is the 77 version. Uh, yeah, this is the 77 version, uh, Simon variable ND filter. Couple things I love about this. One, it's got hard stops. So when you go to the mid and to the max, you flip this knob right here and it's got hard stops. So you don't get that polarization. The other thing I like about it is you can actually just use this and slightly twist and turn it. So when, so you don't have to run the risk of having your fingers anywhere near the ND filter so you don't affect the image. So another thing I like about it, what I love also about it is that it's got um, markers on, it's got markers on the side so you can see how far you are from the minimum and the maximum of the ND filter. Uh, it goes from point, I think it's 0.3 all the way to 1.2 stops of NDs. 
which is about, so it's about a stop to about four stops, which, I'm sorry, 1.8. So, uh, so six stops. So it goes from, so it goes from three stop, from one stops all the way to six stops. So I think this is a fantastic little uh, ND filter. One of the things I also love about it is the fact that it has very, very little color shifts. I mean, with any variable ND, you're going to have color shifts, but this one has so little color shifts that it's so easy to fix those shifts in post. So just get, if you have, if so you don't have a 77 uh, version, just get some step up rings and it will definitely fit on your lens and work really, really well. Obviously this camera does not have IBIS, so that means that it's going to be maybe hard to do some tracking shots, but that's where this little device comes in, the DJI Osmo Pocket. I've done my review of this guy as well. I will definitely leave a link description to my review of this guy in the description below, as well as um, put it in the video card as well. Using this guy to get some like nice, smooth tracking shots, Quality is, uh, the quality is outstanding for what it is at the price point that it is. It is a great, great little device. It's small, it's compact. You can easily use it to get uh, shots of things that you may not necessarily are able to get with a bigger rig, whether if it's because you don't have permission, Shh. or it's the fact that it's just, it, the, the space you're filming in it, uh, does not have um, this, does not have the space for a larger uh, for a larger caption. So this is a great great tool. And obviously, if you're filming outside as well, you got to have NDs. Again, these little NDs I love. What well, they got regular ones as well as polarizer ones. So if you need to get rid of the to use the polarizer filters to sort of bring down the highlights a little bit better, it's a great great tool. Always love these. I will definitely leave a link to these as well. Uh, to where you can get these on Amazon as well. But yeah, this is my basic setup. I love about this. I could easily throw all of this into a backpack, just grab and go and be able to just get any type of shots, any type of audio, in terms of audio, in terms of controlling light, in terms of movement, all of it is taken care of in this little thing in, in such a small, compact, uh, small, compact production setup. So... Hope you guys enjoyed this video. Make sure to leave a like, leave a comment below. Make sure to subscribe to the channel. And until next time, take care, everyone.